All right, we're still in section 7.2, and now we're gonna determine domain and range by just looking at an equation. So what if they take away our graph and we can't follow the path and we still have to figure out what our domain or maybe our range is? Well, one thing you can do is start by assuming that all of the x values will work. Assume that your domain is all real numbers. But if there's ever a denominator, remember that's a red flag because we can't divide by zero. So any x that is going to cause that denominator to equal zero will be a domain restriction. So as soon as you see that rational expression or rational equation, we need to make sure that we exclude anything that's going to cause that denominator to equal zero. But other than that, we need to um, make sure that all of our x's would work. All right, let's do a few examples of each type. Looking at example number six, it asks us to determine the doma domain of each function f. So we don't need to worry about range this time, just domain. Remember that domain is all the x values. And are there any x values that won't work? Well, it might be nice to first look at each equation and figure out what type of equation it is. And we've kind of already talked about the different types of equations. Some of you have seen um, them more recently than others. But if you look at a, what kind of an equation does a look like? Well, to me, that looks like a y equals mx plus b. Doesn't that look like a linear equation? And so I know that this is going to be some sort of line. Well, the 3 represents my slope. The negative 4 represents my y-intercept. Maybe you remember that from a past class. So we can kind of sketch the graph by looking at its equation. If you don't remember how to graph a line, you can always start off with a t-chart. Take some x values, plug them in, and figure out what your y values are. That'll give you points in your graph that you can plot, and then you can kind of connect the dots to figure out the pattern. So if I plug in a negative 1, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, negative three minus four would give me negative seven. So I have a point on my graph at negative one comma negative seven. If I plug in a zero, I end up getting negative four. If I plug in a one for x, I end up getting negative one for y. If I plug in a two for x, I end up getting a two for y. And so what I've done is I've plotted those four points and I can kind of see uh, what the line is going to look like and it's going to look like a straight line with a positive slope. All right, what's the domain then? Well, I know that any line is going to continue on to the left, it's going to continue on to the right, it's going to include all the x's in between. There's not going to be any holes or gaps or any domain restrictions, especially because I don't have a denominator here. So it looks like on any linear graph, I'm going to have a domain of all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. What about b? Well, as soon as I look at b, I notice that I have an x squared. Remember we talked about those being quadratics? If you remember, the graph of a quadratic equation is going to be more like a parabola, a U-shaped graph. If you're not sure exactly what it looks like, again, we can always do a table of values. So plug in a negative 1, plug in 0, plug in 1, plug in a couple different x values if you need to so you can see the pattern. All right, if I plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, plus 7 is 8. If I plug in a 0, 0 squared is 0, plus 7 is 7. If I plug in one, I also get eight. And so then I notice that I have my pattern of my parabola that looks something like this, and it's gonna keep going up and out, just like that. So what's the domain? Well, if I walk along the path, I can keep going left, 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 left. I can keep going right, 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 right. It includes all the x's in between. It doesn't look like there's any holes or any domain restrictions. No matter what x I plug in, I am going to get a y out. So it looks like my domain is going to be all real numbers again, negative infinity to infinity. Any quadratic should have all real numbers as its domain. All right, look at C. C has an x cubed in it. Remember those are called cubic functions? So if I have a cubic function, we might not know exactly what it looks like, but it's gonna be kind of a squiggly graph. Now, depending on your terms and your coefficients, you might have more or less squigglies. They might be higher or lower, but it's gonna kind of look like that no denominator to worry about. So if I can continue going along this squiggly path, I can go to the left, I can go to the right, I can touch every x in between or include every x in between. So it looks like my domain for any cubic function is also all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. Well, actually, any polynomial function has an infinite domain. Linear, quadratic, cubic, any polynomial should have, uh, for the most part, an infinite domain negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so when is it not negative infinity to infinity? We'll look at D. Okay, I know it's kind of sloppy and not very good, but that's supposed to be a red flag. I don't know about you, but as soon as I looked at that, 
that told me it was a rational expression, right? A rational equation. I've got a variable in my denominator and I know that whatever X is, it can be anything as long as it doesn't cause that denominator to equal zero. So that's my first red flag that pops up. I know that that six minus two X cannot equal zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it equal to zero and figure out what X's will work and which ones won't work. If I subtract six from both sides and divide by two, I end up getting X can be anything except for three, because if I plug in a three on that denominator, I'm gonna get a zero, which we know we can't have. So it looks like our domain then would be anything except for three. The set of all X's such that X just cannot be three. Or I can say from negative infinity to three, and then from three to infinity, using parentheses to make sure that I don't include that three. So as soon as I have that rational uh, equation and I have that variable in the denominator, I need to make sure that that denominator does not equal zero. So look at E. Ah, there's another sloppy red flag. I know that as soon as I have a denominator, that denominator cannot equal zero. So if I set it equal to zero and figure out what X's won't work, then all the other X's should work. It looks like this one's a factorable one, right? So I can factor this. I can set each factor equal to zero. And I know that all X's should work except for X equals negative two and X equals negative one. So I can say the set of all X's such that X just cannot equal negative two or negative one. I can even do interval notation. I can say from negative infinity to negative two, and then again from negative two to negative one, and then again from negative one to infinity. I can include all of those, just make sure you use parentheses so we're not including those endpoints. But all the X's in between should work and be okay in my function. All right, what about F? Yeah, F's an absolute value function. Do you remember what an absolute value function looks like? An absolute value function should have a general shape of a V. We can talk a little bit more about where that V would be, or if you're interested, again, you can always plug in numbers into your T-chart. Plug in numbers and see if you can find a, a pattern. See if you can find out exactly where that V happens to be. If you plug in a five, five plus four, or excuse me, negative five, negative five plus four is negative one, and we know that the absolute value of negative one is positive one. If I plug in a negative four, I get zero. And when I plugged in negative three, I also got one. So that helped me figure out the pattern of my um, absolute value graph. So it looks something like that. And now on an absolute value graph, if it looks like it, this, it's going to go up and out forever. So I can go left, 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 left. It's going to include all of these X values. And then it's going to go right, 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 right. So it looks like an absolute value function also has domains of all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. All right, make sure you can tell by not only looking at a graph, but maybe even just looking at the equation, what the domain might be of our different functions.